So here we have our pyroxene group. Remember, these are the single chain inosilicates. Um, and I have here highlighted the um, general chemical formula that will be different for each of these. So we have diopside over here, that's gonna be our calcium magnesium pyroxene. We have enstatite down here, that's our magnesium pyroxene. Jadeite over here, um, which is like an alkali pyroxene, so sodium and aluminum, and then augite up in the top here, and that can be a general mix with a whole bunch of different things going on in that crystal lattice. Um, lots of substitutions can happen there. So these are the four general pyroxenes that we'll be working with. You should see a common theme here, color-wise, of browns, greens, darker colors. That's going to be really common in the pyroxenes. And so I have all of these here. You can see that diopside is this really, really bright green color. And in general, this one has a really nice crystal form. So all of these are going to be monoclinic, except for enstatite, which is orthorhombic. Um, but so we have our regular like monoclinic crystal form here, um, which is really common. Likewise, with this one, we can see we have like a little termination at the end. That's really indicative of that monoclinic crystal form. Think back to that like eraser um, type shape. Here with the augite, we have a really similar um, form as well, still monoclinic. And so having really nice crystal form or crystal shape, these really euhedral crystals that we see here um, are really indicative of uh, diopside and augite here. Um, enstatite, not so much. We can see that, you know, we had some kind of nice crystal form that we were making orthorhombic here, but we have all of these striations that make it really hard to see the crystal face. See, this one was cleaved here, and we have a bunch of striations. Here we have almost like what looks like a conchoidal fracture, an uneven fracture. This is all really common, but these in general kind of stubby crystal shapes, super common in the pyroxene group. And then the ones that are less well-formed, like enstatite, tend to have striations on the crystal faces. You can see that all of these are vitreous luster. So this whole group has vitreous luster. Um, and the way that I kind of decide between these, especially if I have something like augite here or diopside, I really go by color. That helps me a lot. Diopsides I expect to be this kind of green color over here. Augites I expect to be really dark. We can see that this one even has this kind of like it's not oxidation on the outside, but there's definitely some kind of covering on these crystal faces. But I can see the black underneath, and this is the exact same crystal shape as this one here. Um, what else is there? So jadeite should be the easiest one to pick out of this group. One, because the only samples that we have are these like pebble form samples where they look really smooth like this one super smooth and so because they are kind of sanded down um, just from wear and tear they don't look like they have a vitreous luster right it looks a little bit more earthy maybe maybe a little waxy and that can be common if it's been rolling around in a river somewhere or something like that um, or these could have been pebbles that were stuck in some kind of sedimentary rock or something like that. But in general, we would expect this to be have more of a vitreous luster. One thing that uh, sets this apart from the rest of these pyroxenes that we have here is that the cleavage is really hard to see, mainly just because these crisp, the um, actual crystals are almost microcrystalline. So we can't actually distinguish like a singular crystal from these maybe almost right here a little bit, but it's really hard to see. But we also have this like a whole bunch of different colors going on here. This one's white, blue, black, um, and then in each sample there's color variation as well. This is really common. If you look at the rest of these pyroxenes, right, the diopside is the same color green all the way throughout the crystal. Um, just like this one is also green, even though it kind of looks black. You can actually see, especially at the very tip here, that it's still green. Oh, there's a nice reflection on the inside. Still green, but all the same color. Um, enstatite, still brown, all the same color. In general, I find that enstatite is usually this kind of like 
tawny clear brown color so um, while all of these pyroxenes can vary highly in color in general I think of enstatite being like a lighter brown diopside being this really bright green to a darker green and then augite over here being really really dark um, black almost and I'm trying to think so they're all we did the crystal system let's see luster hardness so all of these fall in really similar hardnesses with jadeite being the exception again and it's likely because it has that polycrystalline form um, where this is actually quite hard so this falls at about a seven I should very easily be able to scratch glass let's do a test what's a little difficult here is that I have to find a way to grab it felt some kind of friction there so you can see there's a scratch right there and if I got a better grip on it I probably would have been able to get a better scratch um, so this is going to be the hardest out of all of these um, this one's actually quite hard the rest of them fall between like a five and a six so if we have a good crystal we should be able to do a good scratch let's do this odd right here and they're all going to be really really similar and the variability comes from um, whatever those cations are sitting in that site let's see if I can get a good scratch here Ooh, I even heard that <laughs> so this scratch right there on the top came from this augite here and they're all going to have really similar hardnesses what is a little different especially for enstatite here though is that as you can imagine with all these internal fractures that you see um, I find that this one is a little bit more brittle than the rest of them um, and then for pyroxenes as well we do usually have two planes of really good cleavage we can't see the cleavage in jadeite and stitite is kind of hit or miss it it really depends um, especially with this one we can see that it's fracturing conchoidally here um, but in general we should have at least one good cleavage plane there's one um, but for diopside and augite they should both have um, really good cleavage um, two different angles one at 87 and one at 93 so just just so close to 90 and we can think about how we see them in like thin sections in a microscope that pattern of cross hatching with the cleavages that's what's really common um, it is a little bit more difficult to see in something like these we'd have to look for I mean it's essentially breaking down there I'm not quite sure exactly how we would see this cleavage in these euhedral crystals let's look here hmm so we've got some right there this kind of step pattern that's only one we would expect to see another one at like an almost a 90 degree angle and then that would be common for these audrites, but we also have such beautiful crystals of these two. It's not likely that we'll see cleavage. And I think that's common for the rest of our um, cleavage is really, really good for these kinds of minerals, pyroxenes, um, amphiboles. When we're looking at them in thin section, that's when it's most important. Um, what else is there? We did color and specific gravity for all of these is moderate to moderately low. Um, I think jadeite is probably the most noticeable it is a little bit dense um, but all of these also with something so small it can be difficult to tell in your hand but it's certainly more dense than something like quartz which can come in handy I would say quartz is like low density whereas these are moderate to moderately low and I think that just about covers all of them I mean we're in the pyroxene group so we're not worried about anything reacting which with HCl or solubility or anything like that um, and so this is our group of pyroxenes and really good examples of what we have in our mineral collection.